Okay, the new autopilot is finally up and running. We're sitting on the ground at Liverpool in the northwest of England and we're just going to go for a quick test flight to demonstrate the new panel in action. We're going to fly down to Manchester and just repeat a flight I did in an earlier iteration of this cockpit. We're going to land on the ILS. I think we're going to take the 2-3 right ILS today given the wind conditions, quite windy in the UK today. Just before I do that, in case you're going to try this, I'll tell you what was happening. My software was fine, there was nothing wrong with that, but the damn thing just wouldn't work if you saw the last video. Now there was two different problems. The problem that you would have seen in the last video was this, some sort of lag between pressing the buttons and the button LEDs changing. I couldn't get that to go away. That seemed to be worse the more LEDs were in operation. That's a clue to what was going on. The LED seven segment display, the, the digital display for the altitude pre-select didn't work at all and for a while I convinced myself it was the wiring and I took the panel apart and re-soldered the wires, all sorts of things. Anyway, at the end of the day this is down to the Air Manager API. To drive the LED, if you look at the API for Air Manager, um, the hardware interfaces, you find there's two options for driving the digital outputs. We're using digital outputs for the LEDs, all the LEDs behind these various indicators and the obvious one to use is the HW LED add and HW LED set functions uh, but there's an alternative called HW output add and HW output set the difference being you can with the LED specific ones you can notionally vary the output well it's it's to vary the brightness of the LED now the way it does it this is crucial is it seems to be running some sort of strobe effect presumably with some sort of looping piece of code attached to each output and that consumes it turns out a lot of resources and what's happening is the more LEDs you add pile on you know the more the Arduino gets bogged down with just needless processing really and at the end of the day when you've got more than five or six LEDs it just doesn't work so well that said there is an update which optimizes that functionality somewhat but you don't need it unless you want to I'm not using the brightness function for the LEDs so to cut a long story short I'm using the generic digital output functions instead of the LED specific functions and that works fine you can see all the indicators there if I press the test button you will probably notice as we're going along and doing this demo flight that a lot of these indicators are too bright the best way to fix that is to just change the resist resistor value. Each of these LEDs has a resistor connected in series with it um, to drop that 5 volts down to a voltage that, that the LED needs. Now you can you can reduce that even further and decrease the brightness. In fact I've done that. The, the engage disengage LED which is that little green triangle there, that was far too... I mean the nominal resistor value that you calculate for that is 150, I think 150 ohms, or something like that. You know, if you do that, it's so bright that the light starts to bleed through the black <laughs> background. So I've reduced that. That's actually got a, it's got the original 1K resistor on and a 10K resistor in series with that. So 11K, and it's the brightness is about right. So um, what I might do eventually, if I can be bothered, is to for all these other indicators take the thing apart and solder a, an extra 10k resistor in series. We'll see. But for now it's pretty damn good, excellent in practice and uh, a huge step up from the <laughs> previous incarnation of the autopilot panel which, which is this one here. You'll recall it's now being butchered. Um, <laughs> so we're ready to go, we're on the ground at Liverpool, we're going to take off, head for initially Manchester Barton and from Barton then we'll just head straight across to the Manchester VOR which is on the airport at Manchester and that's our initial approach fix. So if we dial in Barton on the GPS, activate that, we're on GPS, that's 17.9 miles away, let's get airborne a couple of things we can show you on the ground. We can dial in the altitude pre-select. We're pre-selected to 3,000 feet. That'll do for now. We've got a test button that shows all the LEDs working. And unlike many other functions in FSX or the Twin Otter, 
extended that's a genuine test button now because the hardware can fail if one of those LEDs fails or the connection is broken then we're going to get a, an issue with that as soon as we get up we want to be making a turn towards the east whoa a, what the heck a bit of a crosswind going there I can feel almost got full right rudder on there see that crosswind from the left <laughs> well it's not too bad here apart from the wind but we've gone towards pilot now it'll hold us in this turn we'll give it a altitude alert and that will take us up to that 3,000 feet which it will then hold we've gone to nav hold we've got immediate capture because we're on the GPS and it's going to take us to Barton so you can see we've got the altitude alert flag there because we're within a thousand feet of the destination that's gone out because we've passed 300 feet to go it's leveling out now you should see the trim up and down indicators going there as well so we're leveled out to 3,000 feet got some discrepancy between my torques there I think oh left some things on there okay of course that's put us right in some cloud that 3,000 feet back on the props a bit let's go back down to 2,500 just to see if we can drop below this cloud so it's 13 miles to Barton we need to be setting up the radios we're going to need the Manchester VOR on NAV2 Nav 2 is up here for my elite panel, so that's going to be 113.55. So 113.55, swap that in. We see that come alive. We could center that up just, just because we can. It roughly gives us a pointer to. Manchester Airport. We want the ILS on nav 1. ILS for 2 3 right is 109.5. 109.5. Oops, overshot that. Point 0.5. We should see that on the, well, we won't see that on the HSI because we're on GPS at the moment. We've got off nav hold there. I think that's something to do with with me fiddling with the altitude override. I think that cancelled nav hold, but we're still roughly on course. We haven't got below that cloud. <laughs> let's try and no, let's try and get above it. In fact, let's not do that. Let's just let's just leave leave it alone for now. We're kind of we're kind of just dipping in and out. So we've got the radio set up, we want to set up the NAV1 CDI to our final approach course. You don't have to do that, I don't think, but uh, so that's going to be 232. And we've got some rain now, it's good. good. <laughs> and what we'll actually do is Nav two is we'll set that 
We want to go outbound from the initial approach fix on 052, which is the reciprocal of the approach course. So if we dial in 052, then we should be ready. Four and a half miles to go. We should see Barton and Heads. It's probably that cluster of buildings there. The scenery we're looking at here is the Orbix EU England product. This is not true Earth. I don't have that yet. I do have it for explain. But uh, I don't think true Earth Central is true Earth Central released yet for P3D. I don't think it is. Yeah, so that's Barton straight ahead. If I dial in now, if I come off nav hold and just let us keep going. If I dial in Manchester ETCC direct to on the GPS, and if we go to nav hold now, that should take us right there. Now we need to climb because the initial approach fix is overhead the airport it will need to be three and a half thousand feet for the outbound to start flying the procedure so I'm doing that by selecting three and a half thousand feet on the pre-select pressing MDA which sounds counterintuitive that's minimum descent altitude what that does is it immediately because we're below the minimum descent altitude we've selected it climbs us to that. So it set that on altitude hold to acquire and hold 3500 feet. I'm not sure if that's actually a bug in the Aerosoft Twin Otter implementation of this altitude alert error or if that's actually a genuine feature. Again we get those trim indications. One compromise you may have noticed is I've ditched the toggle switch for the on off. For the on -off. I like the toggle switch better the autopilot activate but that's a con I've used a push button a toggle switch there which is a concession to using this autopilot in other aircraft because usually you have a, a toggle switch and that means it can be selected on and off programmatically the toggle switch obviously if you switch the autopilot off through some other software route the toggle switch no longer matches the the internal setting, if that makes any sense. Should have the yaw damper on. We do. Should have, I didn't demonstrate the auto feather arm on the takeoff. We can select that as well. Doesn't make sense to have that on now. No problems with icing today, so we don't need to set anything up. That Manchester VOR MCT, which we've got on NAV2, has got DME, and we've got that up here on the side end radio, 2.2 miles, which matches pretty much what the GPS is showing us. We should probably get the 80s for Manchester. Echo, Golf, Charlie, Charlie, Airport Information, Hotel 1050, Zulu, Weather, Wind 201 at 13, Gusting 223, Visibility 10,000, Sky Condition, Ceiling 1,200, Broken, Ceiling 3,000. 400 overcast light rain temperature 102 point a q and h 0 9 9 4 advise on initial contact you have information hotel one and a half miles to go we should see the nav 2 vor start to center pretty quick we should almost be turning outbound on that um, New course. In fact, we'll select that on the heading bug. 
There it goes. We go to the heading hold now. So the DME is half a mile. We're going to fly out for 10 miles, well actually from, from MCT for this, this approach. We want to be 11 miles, I think, DME before we make the turn inbound. Okay, we're, we're now tracking 054. Now we're a little bit to the left of where we want to be. So I'll give it 10 degrees. So this is a proper IFR approach. We've not seen anything at the minute. We're doing it blind. Hopefully we'll break out shortly before the runway and it'll look cool. So you should see all these indicators following the indicators on the Air Manager panel. I haven't ditched any of those indicators yet. I want to make sure this one works reliably <laughs> before I do that. And these indicators are, the brightnesses are okay. I mean, that yaw damper is pretty bright. Uh, the trim indicators are probably a little bit brighter than they should be. Everything else is okay, really. Pretty much. Okay, we're almost centered up, so we want to make our track. 054. I'll just bring it back around a bit. I'm using the heading bug just to finesse this. We've got a heck of a tailwind, 32 knot tailwind showing on the, the GPS. Now we're 8 miles on the DME. When we get to 11 miles, we're going to make a 45 degree turn to the left, fly for a minute. And then make a reversal and intercept the localizer. We're at 3,500 feet because we've got terrain this end of the airport. We could use the GPS as a DME, not officially, but we could do that if we didn't have a DME. But we're not supposed to fly this procedure without a DME. So that's 11 miles. So we're going to make our left turn onto a northerly heading when we straighten out so we're going to start the clock fly for a minute we need to come off GPS nav now by pressing the CDI button we're on we're showing v lock the HSI is alive you can see we're below the glide slope, which is as it should be. We're still flying on heading bug for now. Once we made that reversal, we'll switch to approach mode. Oh, now we're breaking out. There's that terrain just below us. Typical English weather. I guess these indicators would be more intrusive if we were flying. I mean, I'm flying in light, but the cockpit's quite lit up at the minute, just so we can film it reasonably. But uh, you know, if we're flying in the dark or semi-dark, these are going to probably be too bright. All right, so we can hit approach now, and we've got our arms. Glide slope and nav around. You can see how close we are to that terrain. The radar altimeter is now on scale, 2,000 feet AGL. Kind of gusty, which is why we're getting all these trim up and down indications. You can see they're following the indications on the autopilot panel faithfully. 
you know, representation here is different to what it is in the, the real AP106, but not bothered about that. Looks pretty good. So we should be starting to descend from about eight or nine miles out. We're at 16 at the minute, 16 miles at the minute. We've got nav, we've got localizer capture. Because we don't have DME on the GNS530 display. That said, the GPS, because we had that direct to Manchester Airport dialed in earlier, that's still showing the, the distance even though we're not navigating on it. So that's a handy cross check. 13.7, which is pretty much what it says up on the, on the DME. Fly slope's coming in now. We should get capture any second. There it goes. So we're on the ILS. 11 miles out. We should start slowing down. Oh, there we go. Those trees look a little bit incongruent with the weather. I need to fix these cloud shadows. Everything looks grey on the ground. I think that's T, uh, PTA has exaggerated the ground shadows. I need to fix that. Alright, so we're on the glide slope. We're on the localizer. We're doing 140 knots indicated. And we can see the field dead ahead. Well, although we're hardly in need of it, we'll demonstrate reverse thrust. We get the two beta lights. So there we go, that's it for the autopilot. I'm kind of inspired to think about new panels for the future. I think what's very likely to be the next panel I construct is the return of the fire control panel. We can make it again on one of these 8 by 12 and a half centimeter rectangles and we might position that, I'm not sure really, over here on the left or possibly up here on the right and I think that'll be pretty cool.